Good morning, good morning, good morning. Heavenly Father, God, we come now. We come, God, now with heavy hearts, but, God, we come. We come believing, God, that all is well, even in the midst of all that we go through. God, we ask for your protection, your guard, your guidance. God, we ask for you to show up mightily in your word with us today. God, I thank you for those who are listening this morning, God, that you would give them peace and joy and happiness, that you would heal their bodies, God, that you would give them freedom and comfort even in their minds, God, that if things are going on and they're not comfortable in the, within themselves, God, you would let your Holy Spirit dwell my way. So, God, we thank you now. We praise you now. We love you now, and we magnify you. In the name of Jesus Christ, now we pray and ask it all. Amen. This morning we want to look at a passage of Scripture from the book of Romans, uh, familiar to most, Romans, uh, the eighth chapter, uh, looking down at verses 38 and 39. The Bible says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This morning, we just want to share with you a thought, the comfort in knowing, the comfort in knowing. The scripture reminds us, as Paul has uh, gone through a lot, and as Paul has gone through a lot, we know that he's gone through persecution, he's gone through famine, he's gone through false arrest, he's gone through being shipwrecked, he's gone to be dealing with the threats of murder on his life. But in all that Paul is saying this morning, that I am convinced, I am sure, I am certain. And that's what I say to us this morning. We have to be convinced. We have to be certain. And we have to know with a blessed assurance that God is fully aware of everything that goes on in our lives and that God's love for us would never be separated from us. And within that blessed assurance that we have, we know that we as believers must be in Christ. We in believers, as believers, we know that we must stay in Christ. We as believers, we know that we must grow in Christ. And as we're growing in Christ and as we're staying in Christ and as we're in Christ, we have to know that as the Scripture reminds us, as Paul was saying, that I know that I know that I know and I'm convinced that no matter what happens, I know that God loves me. I, I may not understand everything that happens, but I, I know that God loves me. Paul is saying this morning, I know that even in death, God loves me because God is there. Even in life, God loves me because God is here. He's saying that even in my present, God loves me. Even in my future, God loves me. No matter how low I go, God loves me. No matter how high I go, God loves me. Because the scripture is saying to us this morning that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And this morning we know and we recognize that things are happening around us, but God's promises are still real, and God's promises will always be real because God's word is real in our hearts. God's promise to never stop loving us. And we have to believe that this morning. We have to believe that in the midst of what our country is going through, in the midst of what we're going through with, with different things in our lives, in the midst of a persecution that we may have, in the midst of illness, in the midst of imprisonment, in the midst of death, we got to know that God said, in his word, that he will never, and Paul recognized this, that he never stops loving us. I encourage us this morning that as we continue to pray and as we continue to believe, uh, we, not, we must know and we must recognize that we can't stress over the small things. We can't worry about what is not for us to worry about. I encourage you this morning, instead of worrying, turn our worries to worship and turn our battles to blessings because God loves us, and because God always will love us. God's love for us is unstoppable. God's love for us is constant. God's love for us reminds us that the Lord is faithful and will strengthen us and will protect us, even from evil, because God loves us. And I know that we understand this morning, and we, as we speak words, we know that words are powerful, and words must be used wisely. But the word that teaches us, the word that encourages us, the word that helps us is to know that nothing can separate us from God. I, I know as individuals we may be separated from each other through, through, through miles of being apart, 
but God's love for us in our hearts because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. It never, ever is absent of us. So today I encourage you right now. I encourage you to stay positive. I encourage you this morning that your day can be determined by your attitude, good or bad the day is, but your attitude is going to what's going to make a difference. So I encourage you to have the right attitude. When we look and when we think about the love of God and when we think about how God has protected us and brought us out of dangers that were seen and unseen and, and how we know that we, we were not deserving of what God has done for us, but yet God loves us and God brings us out and God gives us another chance and another chance. I, I encourage you today to continue to know that God's love for you is endless. God's love for you is eternal. And even while you're yet going through whatever you may be going through, you just need to know that there's comfort in knowing that God loves you this morning. And that comfort should bring joy even in the midst of a trying time. That comfort can even bring peace even while we're yet going through difficulties. The confident knowing that God is fully aware. And know this, that nothing catches God by surprise. Everything that happens, God is fully aware. And because everything that happens, God is fully aware, we don't know the outcome of whatever we're going through. But one thing we know is that God knows. And I want you to be certain, and I want you to have a blessed assurance of knowing that God will protect us, God will guard us, God will guide us, because, you know, we've said in the word that God not gives us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And I encourage you today that as you continue to believe, as you continue to trust, and as you continue to stand on God's word, you will know that his word will be used to fight all of our battles because God fights for us. God stands in the gap for us. Why? Because God loves us. Heavenly Father, God, we come this morning with heavy hearts, and we come this morning, God, lifting up your name to those who are going through in Texas. God, we don't know why, but God, we know you know. And God, we know that those families of those kids and the families of the adults that uh, lost lives as we see it, but God, we know that there is something about your presence even in the midst of a trying time, God, that we can get comfort in knowing that you're there and knowing that you love us. We don't have to understand, but we just know that you love us, love the families, God, love on them now, God. Where there's brokenness, God, I know it takes time for pain and suffering to be dealt with and to be to get some understanding. And even in the years to come, days to come, God, there will be still others who may not understand. But, God, one thing we know is that you love us. And we know that everything has plan and everything has purpose, God. And because everything has plan and purpose, God, we trust you. We don't have to know all of the ends of the process, but, God, we trust you through the process. So now, God, I pray that you would give those families strength. I pray now, God, that you would somehow, some way, and in their hearts, God, give them what they need. I don't know what they need, God. I can't imagine their pain. I can't imagine their suffering. I can't imagine how they're feeling right now. But, God, I know you can. So I pray that we as believers would just pray for them. I pray that we would just stand in the gap for them, God, that can't even utter a word right now, that they will know and they would realize, even through all of this, God, that you have love for all of us. So bless them, protect them, guard them, and guide them, and God, give them the peace that they need in the days to come. So, God, we love you now. We magnify you and we glorify you, and we do lift you up. For it is in the power from the penetrating name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, we believe, we declare, and we decree, and we call it to be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.